Website traffic sources. Where people come from to get to your website. It sounds really simple. There's referral traffic, social traffic, traffic from, from search engines, direct traffic, but actually there is a ton of misunderstanding about what these things really are. Uh, so I'm going to break it down for you in this video. What people mean when they say these things, what the real definition is of for each of these. Also, how to get a bit more traffic from each. Uh, so we're going to jump in, bust some myths, and explain the details of website traffic sources. Hi, this is Andy from Orbit Media, and I'm excited to be making this quick video for you. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, there is a detailed text form article version of this. Just open the description and you'll find the link right there. Okay, so let's jump right in. Here we go. Probably one of the most popular reports in Google Analytics is the traffic sources. Under acquisition, all traffic, channels, a lot of people I know start their trips into Google Analytics in this report. The column here, the, first, the primary dimension, the first column is called default channel groupings and these are the big buckets. So this is where a lot of people just at a glance look at these things. This, this little chart will give you an idea of how to understand them better. Email and social, you got to keep working at those or you don't keep getting traffic from those sources. Put your back into it, you get blisters on your hands, you got to work really hard at it. Paid, got some money, buy some gas, put it in the engine, you can go far and go fast right away. SEO is a totally special source of traffic because every page has the chance to catch traffic like a sail catches wind. And you can keep adding more pages to any website. There's no limit to the number of URLs you can have on your domain. Branding, if you've ever seen the Google Analytics account, get lots of direct traffic, as we'll see in a bit. So this is a good way to help understand how these traffic sources are very different. If you look at a specific URL, for example, an article that was promoted through content marketing, you'll see a spike in traffic as soon as that went live and it was promoted through email or maybe social media. But whether or not it gets that long tail of traffic is a function of how well it was optimized for search. Was it a keyword relevant article? If so, was it keyword focused? Was it a great page on that? Did it indicate its relevance? So we'll start there. Organic search. Presumably anyone who comes from a search engine. Yes, and that is the definition and how they deduce that that is the default channel grouping when the medium exactly matches organic. This is a very consistent source of traffic if you drill down to that report. Uh, for most websites, there's not a lot of spikes, right? It moves up or down slowly over months, but uh, this is a B2B site, so low traffic on the weekends, you get kind of that sawtooth profile. The problem with this report is that it excludes or it includes searches for your brand. If somebody just didn't type in the .com and they typed in your business name, they search for your business name, that's really a navigational query. Kind of weird that it's all included in organic. Uh, some websites, they say, we're doing great in search, we've got tons of organic traffic, but when you go look at the keywords they're ranking for, it's really nothing except their brand name. That's basically direct traffic. That's one of the problems with this report. How do you get more traffic from search? Target phrases based on your own domain authority. You've got to understand authority. Don't target phrases if that's way out of reach for the amount of credibility that your domain has. You need to understand that there are uh, what you can rank for is a function of the authority of your website. So you, we've got another video made on this and another article on this, how to research keywords. Domain authority is the trick. Also, just write super detailed articles, thorough pages that answer every one of the related questions. That's semantic SEO. Uh, it's part of the fun. Uh, the, the best page uh, has an advantage, of course. Then go back and rewrite older pages, update older pages, the almost high ranking pages can make a big difference, right? It's called optimization because it's not a one-time thing. You gotta keep going back and keep making improvements to those pages until ideally in the end, you've got the best page on the internet for your topic. If you're not doing that, you're really not doing SEO. Next, social media. Anybody who comes from a social media website, right? Google Analytics has really a tough time understanding what this is, uh, so, the way that they put things in that bucket is that either the social source referral matches yes or the media matches all this stuff that indicates it might be from a social media network. When you look at social media traffic separately, you'll find that it's actually very spiky. People are just unpredictable. Do you know what's going to go viral tomorrow? I have no idea what's going to go viral tomorrow. Sometimes a bunch of people share something, sometimes they don't. Social media websites have algorithms that will seemingly randomly just show something to many more people. So it's very hard to predict traffic from social. 
Also, the problem with this traffic source is that it doesn't include dark social traffic that from uh, shares that weren't attributable to social media, right? There are, there are studies that show that maybe 85% of all sharing happens within emails or in text messages or other places. That might be most of social sharing. It's not in social media networks. So this dark social is a giant black hole and it's, uh, uh, that traffic could appear in referral or direct as we'll see. If you want more traffic from social, just keep sharing. It's partly a function of just how active you are in sharing. You want help with that? There's a ton of tools for that. It schedules and automates your social media. Very helpful. Also, the best thing we've ever done for social sharing and driving traffic from social media is to create short one minute videos that promote the content. If you worked really hard on that piece of content, make a tiny commercial to promote it. Works like a charm. Uh, we've got uh, lots of tips for that. And avoid Instagram. Instagram, not so great. There's not really a link in there. Like it's not a great channel for promotion uh, and driving traffic. Uh, Pinterest, surprisingly good. Uh, so it's partly uh, a function of the, the network itself. Third bucket, referral traffic. This is any visitor from another website, right? Any visitor from a non-search engine, non-social media website. Easy for Google Analytics to understand this. It's just whenever the, ma the media matches the referral. Uh, it is not as consistent as uh, uh, traffic from search. It's also not as chaotic as traffic from social. Uh, you will see spikes. Uh, it's partly just press coverage or you got mentioned somewhere. The problem with this is it does include traffic from, so from a, some social sources. Just look closely, you'll see them, strange you know, link, uh, URL shorteners, and from search engines. Google Analytics by default doesn't consider DuckDuckGo to be a search engine. You can set it up to, to um, track it as such if you'd like. If you want more referral traffic, just carefully pay attention to your inclusion in directories. Are you part of an association? Do they link to you? If you won an award, do they link to you? Just look for links. Just don't miss a chance to get a link from another website, obviously. Also, write for lots of other sites. It makes a big difference. They've got bigger audiences than you. Than you. you can borrow that visibility by writing for other places. Uh, it's something we learned a long time ago and we still do a lot of write for everyone. And then do something newsworthy. Be interesting. Get mentioned in other places. Uh, if you want to uh, get a press hit, do something press worthy. And uh, that's those spikes in referral traffic are often from press hits. Our next traffic source, number four, is email. It's any visitor from an email campaign, right? Analytics knows. It's just whenever the medium exactly matches email. If you look at the traffic from this source, it's going to be super spiky, but also very consistent over time. Every time you send an email, it's going to bring traffic in from that medium. As long as you add the campaign tracking code, it's going to connect all the dots and you can see for, for each email, the bounce rate, pages per visit, average session duration, conversion rates, all that stuff. The problem is it only works if you add that campaign tracking code. Right? We've been talking a lot about this. In other words, every link to your website from every email that you send, they click on that link, has to have in the URL at the end a bunch of parameters that show like this. Google Analytics can see those and that's how it knows that that visitor came from email. How do you add that? Using a campaign uh, campaign tracking code added by a URL builder. Here's the one we made. It basically just puts the campaign UTM source equals, UTM medium equals, UTM campaign equals. It puts all that on the link. You can then put that link in the email. Our, our tool is fun. It actually previews for you what the um, report will look like, what the campaign report will look like in Google Analytics. Now it connects the dots. Your email service provider gives you delivery, open, and click-through rates. And now Google Analytics will know that that person came from email, put them in that, in that uh, medium, uh, show them in the, in the uh, default channel grouping, in the all channels uh, report, and then show you all the engagement metrics on those emails. If you want more traffic from email, send more email. <laughs> it's a, uh, there are very few brands in my experience that I've met that have really, uh, uh, tested the comfort level of their subscribers. These people asked for email. Why aren't you sending them email? Um, so, uh, and if they get bored of it, they can just unsubscribe. It's a wonderful channel because it's totally opt in. You should never send an email to someone that doesn't want one. That would be terrible. And, uh, anyone that doesn't want to get them anymore can simply unsubscribe. Improving your subject lines and your calls to action will, of course, impact your, your uh, traffic from email as a channel. And try counter-competitive timing. Send things at different times. Ever sent a weekend email? Might work great. 
your campaign report will show you. It'll also show up in your uh, default channel groupings. Direct, we finally get to it. The fifth and final source of traffic is direct. Supposedly, it's any visitor who typed a web address into the browser, or maybe they had it bookmarked. In fact, it's when the, tr the source matches direct and the medium matches not set, or, and get this, <laughs> read this carefully, when the medium exactly matches none. Direct means everything that they don't know. It's the unknown bucket. It's the everything else bucket. It's the junk drawer of traffic sources. When you look at it separately, it's very spi it's it's kind of consistent, but you'll see spikes in there. What are those? It'll be hard to find out because it's going to be when the traffic source is, is unknown. It's all that unknown stuff. What could it be? I've got a big list for you. Yes, hypothetically, right? That person manually typed in the address. It was in their browsing history or they had it bookmarked. But it also could be all that dark social traffic, right? What about that person that, that uh, actually like emailed it to someone, right? All that sharing that happens that's not on a social network. Uh, clicks from non-browsers. You send it to me in an email. I open that from my app, email app. Apps don't, software doesn't have referral data, right? There's no, ref, there's no um, referring data because that's not a browser. So all traffic from everything that's not a browser gets categorized as direct. That includes PowerPoint presentations, PDFs, Slack will drive direct traffic, right? SMS or text messages. And what if that visitor, any visitor who's in incognito mode or private browsing mode that clicks through, that's not going to pass any referring data? Direct. Bad tracking code? Direct. And clicks from any HTTPS page to an HTTP page on your site. If you've got a, if you don't have a security certificate that gives you the HTTPS and there's a visit from an HTTPS website, it gets categorized as direct. Don't ask me. It's just how the internet works. So it is a huge category of traffic, as you can see from the top online services. I asked my friends at SimilarWeb to pull a report to show uh, the top sources of traffic to the top online website, uh, online service websites. This is like exact target and HubSpot and GetResponse and SEMrush and all the user testing. All of these sites, most of their traffic is direct. Why? They're big brands. Why else? It's just unknown. It's just the everything else. It's the least accurate of all of those. Um, but we should all still work to work hard to get more traffic from direct. Do some offline marketing. Put a web address into a TV spot. Where's that going to show up? Direct. Radio. Direct. Print or outdoor, right? These are ways to try to drive, get people to go to the internet and then go to your website, right? They didn't come from anywhere else. They came from offline. Launching a useful tool that people remember and type in will be an incredible source of direct traffic. We all just watch your own browsing behavior, right? You can probably just type in tools all the time. They're helpful. You remember them. And building a brand. It's a fun idea, right? How to get more... Anyone ever deliberately try to get more traffic from direct? That if As soon as you start thinking about that, you're going to start thinking about how to grow your brand, grow awareness for your brand. Final thought, be diverse. You should have diverse traffic sources. You shouldn't have too much traffic from one source. This is mine. It's a little bit... Of, uh, off balance. You can see a lot of traffic from search. You are more secure in your future and your destiny as a marketer if you have multiple sources of traffic that you have control over each, right? More levers to pull. Here's an example of a, of a brand that has very diverse sources of traffic. This is a friend of mine, Sean. Well done. That's what great web marketing looks like. There you have it. A bit different than most people thought, right? There's a lot of things in there that I don't think everyone understands. Uh, we're glad you found this useful. If you know anybody else who has misconceptions on this topic, we'd be grateful if you sent this video along to them. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss the next one, as soon as it comes out, just subscribe and you'll get it right. You'll get a notification as soon as it shows up. Great. Again, Andy from Orbit. We'll see you next time.